Okay, let's talk about capacitors in series. That's a, where capacitors um, are hooked up one right after the other in series. And so um, we'll put it, we'll connect them in series with a battery. And so um, what happens is when you, when you connect this up, this being the positive terminal and this being the negative terminal, what it does is electrons from here see the positive charge and they come on over making this positive. Those being positive will, will attract the electrons from this plate over here. So they're going to, the electrons from over here will see, see those positives and they'll come on over. Now these electrons right here, they're not going through. Nothing from here goes through to the battery. This is air. And so the electrons are stopped. This is like a cul-de-sac right here or a dead end. There's, you can't, they can't get across here because that's air or, you know, some other insulator. Okay. Um, but you know what? If that's negative, then this is going to be positive because electrons left. And I want to convince you of something. However many, uh, however much charge this is, this is the exact opposite charge. So if this is two coulombs, that's if this is negative two coulombs, that has to be positive two coulombs. And here's why: before you connected the battery, see this piece of wire? That's just a piece of metal. See that piece of metal? Chunk, 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 chunk. That's a metal. Chunk, 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 chunk. And that metal was had no net charge. And there's no way for a charge to get onto that metal. And so, so it's just polarizing this charge. And so here's the thing is uh, Q, that Q for that capacitor will equal this Q for this capacitor. Hey, these positive charges will now pull electrons off of here, making this positive. And you know what? You see how much this is charged? Those the, that charged up because these electrons went over there. This has this piece of metal has no net charge, and so that Q is the same as this Q. And so all these Qs are the same. Okay, now here's the deal. Kirchhoff's loop rule says when you start at A, and you go around any in any path you go, it doesn't it's path independent. But I'll start and go around this path. Um, I'm going to, I got to have no voltage difference. So if I go up on um, VB of volts, then I'm going to drop some. Now, why am I going to drop some? Because the field is this way. The field, I'm trying to draw little arrows. You can't see them probably, but the field is that way. And so when you do your path integral, you, when you go with the field, that's when you drop potential energy. You actually lose potential energy. Just like when you raise something against the gravitational field, you gain potential energy. Go with the field, you lose potential energy. So I'm going, when I go with the field, it drops potential energy. Okay, well here's the thing. If this, is a, this, if this has a voltage V1, and this has a voltage V2, and this has a voltage V3, because of Kirchhoff's loop rule, there's no voltage dropped across the wire because this is a wire that's in equilibrium. So there's no field. There's no field in there. So E dot dr goes to zero. Like when I do my little drs here, dr, 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 all those are E times dr, E times dr, E times dr, add them up. But the E is zero. So zero dot dr, zero dot dr, zero, zero dot dr. So there's no voltage dropped across the wire. Okay, so... Uh, what I'm going to tell you, though, is according to Kirchhoff's loop rule, then, that VB, via the battery, should equal, that's what, that's what takes you up, you have so much voltage, that should equal V1 across capacitor 1 plus V2 plus V3. So there you have it. Okay, now, if you wanted to, um, you could say that the, the voltage, remember our formula for capacitance is Q over V. So V is equal to Q over C. Okay, so the V of the battery is equal to Q1 over C1 plus Q2 over C2 plus Q3 
over C3. Now the voltage of the battery, uh, it's is if if you wanted to get rid of all these capacitors and just make it one capacitor. So if I wanted to replace all these capacitors by just one equivalent capacitor, it would have the voltage of the battery across it, and it would have um, a C equivalent. So the and it would have a certain amount of charge. So the voltage of the battery is going to be equal to Q over C equivalent. And so that's equal to Q1 over C1 plus Q2 over C2 plus Q3 over C3, C3. That's a C. But these Q's are all the same Q's. And so you can get rid of, you can cancel out the Q's. And what you have, I'll write it on a separate sheet of paper because I'm crunching everything together here, is for series capacitors, if you want to replace it with, if you have three or four or five uh, series capacitors, if you want to get replace it with one capacitor, the equivalent capacitance is equal to 1 over C1 plus 1 over C2, plus 1 over C3. So that's the equivalent capacitance. Um, notice that that's the opposite of, this is for series now, when they're in series. If you remember last year for resistors, um, it, the equivalent resistance was R1 plus R2 plus R3. This looks more like parallel circuits when you're when you're doing resistors. Remember for um, parallel circuits you'd use 1 over R equivalent is 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2 plus 1 over R3. Alright, so let's do a real quick problem and show you how you would you'd solve for this then. I'm going to use really simple basic numbers here. Okay, so let's say that um, you have um, 4 volts and you have 3 capacitors. Each um, of them are 3 farads. Well, let's make them yeah, 3 farads. If you wanted to find out how much charge was on each of these, then what you can do is you can simplify this circuit you can say this is the same as a circuit that's 4 volts with one capacitor. And the capacitance of this capacitor would um, be, let's see, since these are in series, you'd go 1 over 3 farads plus 1 over 3 farads plus 1 over 3 farads. That equals 1, so 1 over C is equal to um, 3 over 3 farads. Now flip them both over. So C is equal to 3 farads over 3, which is um, 1 farad. So this is 1 farad. Okay, if that's 1 farad, <clears throat> then um, I know the, the what the charge is on here. The charge is always CV. And the voltage here has to be 4 volts because this is 4 volts. You go up 4 volts, you got to come down 4 volts, according to Kirchhoff. And so this is going to be, um, the charge on here will be C times V. So there's 4 coulombs of charge. Now come back up here. That means that there's 4 coulombs of charge here. 4 coulombs of charge here. And 4 coulombs of charge here. So now if I wanted to know the voltage across here, uh, voltage is equal to Q over C. And so I could just do the Q over C of each of these, and you'd see that they added up to 4 volts. Okay, so that's how you do a series circuit. Um, I'll be back in a bit to show you how you handle a parallel circuit.